What's going on guys, RBG here, back with another Transformers video. In the previous vid, I asked why the Allspark transformed human technology into hostile Decepticons, and we deduced that since Earth's tech was reverse engineered from Megatron, they would ultimately become Decepticon baddies once they were reanimated by the cube's energy. It was a very fun topic to cover, and we got some great dialogue going in the comments section, so I definitely think you should check it out if you haven't already. <laughs> For today's video, I want to ask why the Matrix of Leadership was no longer a factor after Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon. It's something that's always been the biggest piece of the Transformers lore since the Generation 1 cartoon, and it looked like it would play a major part in Michael Bay's cinematic Transformers universe. We saw Sam with Wiki use it to resurrect Optimus by shoving its sharp end into his chest at the end of TF2. And the same method was applied when Optimus used it to revive his former leader Sentinel Prime in TF3. It seemed like this iconic artifact would have huge staying power and continue to light the Autobots' darkest hour. So why was it all of a sudden forgotten in the later films? Now before we answer that question, I want to give a huge congratulations to the winner of our last giveaway, Chris Cruz. To receive your award, go to the About section of my channel and message the email. And make sure you send your channel URL to confirm that it's you. For this month's video, we're going to be giving away a masterpiece movie series Ironhide. This bad boy features premium detail and is inspired by the weapon specialist's first appearance in the 2007 Transformers film. He includes in-depth articulation and can transform into his GMC heavy duty truck alt mode. To enter in a chance to win, all you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. So hit that notification bell and be on the lookout for the winner in April via my community post. But anyways, the concept of the Matrix originates from the brain of Marvel Comics writer Bob Budansky and is a result of the no girls slash gender policy enforced by Hasbro regarding their then now robot brand. Because there were no female robots, the robots had no gender, and Budansky came up with an asexual method of reproduction in the form of the Creation Matrix, a primal program housed within the Autobot leader that could bring new Transformers to life, which would also prove to be a helpful plot device when he was required to introduce new characters to the series. The appearance of the Matrix in the Generation 1 animated series originated with early script drafts on the Transformers the movie which introduced the idea of life sparks, very similar to the sparks that would later be introduced with Beast Wars. A spark? Yup, the very thing which makes us what we are. Every Cybertron, Maximal or Predacon has one. The Matrix was not present in the earliest known incarnation of the movie, and instead, upon his death, Optimus Prime transformed his own life spark to Ultra Magnus, with the implication that this was standard practice among Autobot leaders. However, this idea was eventually discarded and replaced with a physical object known as the Matrix of Leadership, which evidently derived its name from the creation matrix of the comic book. The episode Cosmic Rust attempted to introduce the concept of the Matrix to the animated universe before the movie, but the dialogue containing the reference was deleted during production. The line which dated the creation of the Matrix to 4.5 million years ago would ultimately have conflicted greatly with what would be learned of the Matrix in the future. The Matrix of Leadership is a conduit for the power of Primus, the creator god of the Transformers, serving as a means of access to the Transformers afterlife, through which it can either bestow new Transformers life, or provide its will with a means of communicating with the deceased leaders who have come before them. In some universes, it was considered the only means of Cybertronian reproduction, but in the live-action Bay films, it was a tool created by the Allspark to help the Primes in their search for Energon, and it can only be properly utilized by one who shares the lineage of the Primes. These divine powers put it at the center of much of the Autobots' religion, spirituality, and prophecy, and while many Decepticons are less inclined to believe in its divinity, they certainly covet the increased physical power it is known to convey upon its holders, and several have made obtaining the Matrix one of their primary goals. As one of the embodiments of the power of Primus, the Matrix is the antithesis to Unicron, and one of the very few things the Chaos Bringer fears. In the 86 cartoon film, it was used by Hot Rod to fulfill the prophecy by opening the talisman and releasing its power, which tore Unicron apart from within. And during the Beast Wars saga, Optimus Primal merged his spark with the Matrix, which granted him with a powerful upgrade in the form of Optimal Optimus. We witnessed it bring Optimus Prime back to life and grant him with unimaginable strength in TF2. So why was it never brought up again after Transformers Dark of the Moon? It's something that crosses my mind every time I go back and watch the films like Age of Extinction and especially The Last Night. You would think if a movie is going to feature a major villain like Unicron, then the Matrix would have to be in by proxy because the two go hand in hand. 
the Matrix of Leadership is the end-all be-all tool that can put an end to the God of Chaos. Considering the fact that TF5's Unicron was very similar to the one featured in Transformers Prime, where he's essentially the Earth, you'd think Optimus Prime would have dealt with him the same way by using the Matrix. But he just leaves the planet while the threat still remains. They didn't even really try to kill Unicron at all, and the primary villain Quintessa insinuated that she had her own plans with him. He doesn't like it. Who doesn't like what? Unicron. And we never saw how that played out since the Bay vs. No More. But there are so many things that could have been done with the Matrix besides playing a minor role in TF2 and 3. If it was up to me, I would have made it to where Bumblebee took on the Matrix just to be able to stand toe to toe with Nemesis Prime in TF5. It would transform B into a Prime and the hammer he wielded could have been passed off as the Forge of Solace Prime. He would then give it back to Optimus to release him from Quintessa's control. That would have been 10 times better than B speaking to Optimus and snapping him out of it. And it would have been an awesome callback to the G1 cartoon when Rodimus used the Matrix of Leadership to free Optimus from the Quintessence control. Something else that plays my mind is how Optimus Prime skills as a leader never really improved after obtaining the Matrix. I've uttered this over and over again, but despite being a powerful warrior able to take down all the Decepticons he faces in the films, he always needs some kind of help to defeat the main villains of each movie. Sam had to kill Megatron for him in the first movie, and he needed Jetfire's parts to defeat Fallen in the second movie. He also needed Megatron's help to defeat the Sindel in the third movie. And in the fourth movie, he wouldn't be able to defeat Lockdown if he hadn't had the help of Bumblebee, K, Tessa, and Shane. He charges into situations without fully thinking them out. If the Matrix of Leadership is said to contain the power of Primus and the combined wisdom of the Primes, why wasn't it used to help Optimus make wiser decisions? Like, why didn't he ask the former Primes for advice during the tough times when the Autobots were hiding from Cemetery Wing? The only time they were summoned was when they appeared in Sam's vision and told him that he displayed the qualities of a true leader and has earned the Matrix which has to be quote unquote earned instead of quote unquote found. And they revealed that it had always been Sam's destiny shortly before they resurrected him. Optimus could have really used this wisdom in all of the later movies. But if we're going to be fair, this issue was explained in the official novel for Revenge of the Fallen. In this novelization, it's revealed that after Sam with Wiki conversed with the Dynasty of the Primes in the afterlife, the intent was that the power and knowledge of the Allspark moved from his mind into the remains of the Matrix, reconstituting it. This, then, was why it was able to bring Prime back to life. So, in a way, this essentially transforms this universe's version of the Matrix of Leadership into the same life-giving, knowledge-holding object from the other Transformers fictions. Additionally, Prime was to recover the Matrix from the Sun Harvester and carry it within himself in traditional Matrix fashion. While none of these events were seen to play out explicitly on screen, the Matrix's continued presence in Dark and the Moon within Prime's body and the reverence it receives suggests that these events still happened within the continuity of the films, even if they didn't explicitly talk about them. So take of that what you will, but I don't think this wisdom bearing artifact aided Prime in giving him knowledge. Now what I will say is that the will of the Primes was most likely keeping Optimus alive during all of these deadly encounters with the Decepticons. Something that's not stated as much is the fact that he's invincible. That's right, as long as the Matrix stays in Optimus's chest, he cannot die. This fact is corroborated when we see him survive a powerful blast that goes into his back and out of his chest and he was able to survive being impaled in the chest with his own sword. So if there's anything we can take from the Matrix's relevance in TL4 and 5, it's the fact that he was able to keep Optimus Prime going and that's basically it. Now if the Bay film series were continued, I'd assume that Optimus would ultimately use the Matrix to revive Cybertron. Since the planet was originally the adopted form of Primus and the Matrix of Leadership is said to be a conduit for his powers, it would be only right that the power be used to resurrect him. But anyways guys, that's just my opinion on this. We'll never really know why the Matrix of Leadership was never brought up again, let alone utilized, so it's nice to give theories on what became of it. But with that said, I'm going to open the discussion up to you. What are some of the reasons you think the Matrix wasn't used anymore? Was it because Bay and the writers wrote themselves into a corner, or they just simply forgot? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my future videos. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. Also, if you like anime and meme culture, you can get this awesome apparel over at BeautifulHalo.com. By clicking the promotional link in the description box below, you get 5% off any $49 purchase or higher. So definitely check it out if you're interested. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. You're